And which carbon is the water going to attack, left or right? Right. Because it's more stable because of the It's more substituted. Atom. That's right. Now, sterics are not the issue. Now, electronics are the issue, because now we have a charge. Once we have a charge, electronics are more important than sterics. So now the water is going to attack the more substituted. And do we think the water is going to come in from in front or from behind? In front. In front because? Because the cyclohendronuclease is dashed. Yeah, now the steric hindrance, now this bromine is providing steric hindrance. And this is a lot closer than this methyl group over here. So now this water should come in from in front because there's a lot of steric hindrance behind from this bromonium. This methyl is too far away to be as important a factor. This is very convenient because we've ended up with an oxygen on a wedge, which is what we want in our final product. We found a way to get an oxygen on a wedge, which is what we want to have in the final product. What do we do now? Add the NaOH. Now we have to add a strong base that's going to make this into a better nucleophile. Well, there must be, there always has to be some solvent. There has to be some solvent. Uh, I suppose you'd want to use an aprotic solvent here because otherwise the sodium hydroxide would deprotonate the solvent instead of deprotonating this. So uh, any aprotic solvent I, I would suppose would be okay here. So DMSO is aprotic? That's right. Okay. Cool. Now we have a deprotonated oxygen. And what would happen now? Now it would attack the carbon on which the PR is attached to. And the bromine would leave. This is basically an SN2. We don't have to do anything more to get this to happen. As soon as we deprotonate this, it's in good position for this reaction. So we are done. So what was the answer? What, what do we have to add? We have two, two, two steps. And the answer is they actually did use a protic solvent. They actually, uh, so by the way, it doesn't have to be sodium hydroxide, it could be any methoxide. They actually used. Yeah, they actually did this. Because after all, if this deprotonates this, you just get another methoxide. So this is safe. So this is a, a good safe solvent. If it deprotonates this, you just get another methoxide. So eventually it's going to do the interesting thing and deprotonate your alcohol over here. So to be safe, we should just use that. So it seems like you could have used sodium hydroxide in water, or methoxide in methanol, or ethoxide in ethanol. All right, the important thing here is that we went over two ways of synthesizing uh, oxycyclopropanes, or epoxides. The simple one is MCPBA, and that would tend to synthesize, put the oxygen on the less hindered face. Uh, and then we learned another way, which is to start with a alcohol and a halogen on adjacent carbons, and then you deprotonate the alcohol to make it into a better nucleophile, and then the alcohol oxygen forms the oxycyclopropane. And how can you get an alcohol and a halogen on adjacent carbons? No, oh, by, using the, the, by, using by using this approach over here. So in order to get the alcohol and the halogen and adjacent carbons, you can use our diatomic halogen plus water approach. Mm 